Lukáš Polák je náš next speaker. He has been playing with distributed systems and ETL for several years. In the past, he helped Hollywood's movie studios to ingest analytical data from social media platforms so they could improve the targeting of their ads. Also, he supported the design and creation of a proprietary query engine named Husky. This engine was designed to allow low-code access to data even for non-technical users. Currently, he works on a platform for data ingestion and calculation of insights for data stories using the project Prefect. And he's going to talk about scaling distributed workflows using Prefect. Welcome, Lukash. Thank you. So, hello, everybody. As uh, the person next to me said, my name is Lukas Polak. And today, I want to talk to you a bit more about how we in the stories use Prefect to scale distributed workloads. Before I dive uh, deep into what we are using and why we are doing this, I would uh, like to spend a bit of uh, time uh, talking about myself. So, currently, I'm tech lead for the project called Data Stories inside Atacama. I joined Atacama uh, more or less a year and a half ago. In the meantime, we, spent, uh, we worked diligently on making sure that Data Stories is a great and stable platform that scales horizontally for even for very high uh, workload. And as mentioned in my bio, I primarily worked with ETL pipelines in my career. So, so uh, that, that's why I spent a bit more time uh, trying to figure out what would be the best uh, workload solution to use for data stories as a product and why uh, Prefect is that solution for us. So, let me start off with uh, the obvious question. What is data stories? And let me tell you why I'm talking about data stories first, because in order to understand why we use it, you probably should know where the journey begins and, and why we use Prefect as a tool. So, whenever somebody asks me what data stories is, I always tell them, imagine PowerPoint, but with live data. Instead of working on presentation and updating data every week for your boss, use data story to, uh, to create a nice and visual pleasing uh, presentation that anybody, even non technical person, can create and that, uh, that uh, presentation works with uh, data which are periodically updated. That's the important part. But we don't want to uh, stop there. Instead, we said that we would like to give our, our customers more. And by more, I mean we would like to give them the insight. You can, you can see them as the t two uh, blocks above the chart, and those are the authentic insights that we generate on data in real time. So, our, our platform uh, supports two, uh, two kind, kind of jobs. One is imp uh, importing data into the platform. Next one is custom uh, ML algorithms, they need to be run in real time to give our, our customers the great experience. So, what were the challenges in data stories? So, why we needed every, everything that I'm about to talk to right now? Well, we do run a lot of background jobs per day. By, uh, by, by a lot, I mean a lot. In a few slides, I will give you some, uh, some numbers to give you the perspective of uh, uh, how big of a scale I'm talking about. As I mentioned before, we do run different workloads. It's not only the real-time jobs that we need for, for insights. We do have periodic uh, data uploads to, uh, to our uh, platform. That means that we'll take data source, try to understand uh, how the source looks like, detect it data types, perform some, some lightweight modification to the data, and then store them somewhere. On top of that, we need to create observable platform because our team is actually responsible for maintaining the solution up in production. We do have work in production at data stories uh, at uh, dot .atacama com, and me and my team, we make sure that the thing runs. That means that if there's a problem, we need to be able to, uh, to pinpoint it, debug it, and fix it very soon. For us, the operational costs are also a matter. So we run the, the production, but we also have to make sure that it doesn't cost fortune for, for Takama to run the product. 
So we have to be cautious about how much we are spending on compute. With that hand in hand, go scaling. So when, when the uh, demand for charts is high, we need to be able to scale the, the solution. When, when the dust settles down, we need to be able to downscale it without uh, uh, any hiccups. So, how did we achieve it? Well, we use Prefect. Let me start off with a brief history le uh, lesson. I know that many of you probably know a project called Apache uh, Airflow. It is one of the uh, most used uh, workflow orchestration engine uh, until recently. There was a guy named Jeremy McLaughlin who joined the Apache Airflow project sometimes around 2016, worked on it for a few years and said, well, this is not good enough. Apache Arrow has some serious limitation that prevents uh, users to use it in the current world. There's a lot of limitation that comes to scheduling uh, uh, jobs, the re reusability or the, uh, or the way we, you code the jobs. Feel free to, to talk to me after the presentation, what are the limitations? Uh, there's a lot of them. And you're a Max too. And he said, okay, I can do better. That's why he founded the Prefect. He spent a couple of years in, in the open source community working on Prefect version one. And that, that tool was released early this year in February 2022. Uh, as you can see, there's Prefect version two released uh, not uh, late, uh, late afterwards in July, basically this summer. It's called Orion. Orion is abbreviation for orchestration. Uh, we, uh, as, as a uh, company or data stories, we still run on Prefect version one as we don't think that pre uh, pre Prefect version two is currently as stable as we would like it to be. And also we spend significant amount of time uh, tailor-mading tailor our solution to version one and uh, the versions itself, uh, themselves are not very compatible between each other. So it would require a lot of changes in infrastructure. For us as a team, the, uh, that's a problem we would like to avoid for now and we are waiting for, the, again, the dust to settle in order to be able to, to safely migrate to new version. That doesn't mean that version one is bad or unusable. We use it and we are more than happy with it. So, how does Prefect actually help us? There's countless uh, of instances where the Prefect is better social than, than other others. But for us, it boils down to this. One of the coolest thing about Prefect is the way it separates its compute from scheduling capacities. Uh, you will see, see what it means on the next slide, but basically uh, uh, it means that it gives you freedom to run your workload wherever you want to, however you want, want it. And you, you, you can set up one Prefect in, in instance and run the same workloads on, uh, on multiple uh, types of, uh, of execution, either as a uh, Kubernetes job or in, inside the Dask cluster or as a local process. Whatever you want to, Prefect is here to help and it's one line of code uh, for you. Another thing is easy to onboard. You'll see uh, in a moment how easy it is to write a pre Prefect code how is it is right to, uh, to prefect task and create a flow. Prefect task is basically Python function with one decorator around it. If you want to test your, that function, it's easy. Sim simply execute the function. If you, if you decide that your code is stable enough and you want to move it to the distributed world, don't change anything. Simply run uh, the function through prefect and prefect will handle the rest. So it's really easy to, to, to gradually onboard your code from synchronized way to asynchronized way to, to the Prefect. Another cool feature that's part of, part of uh, Prefect is built-in support for conditions and, and loops. That allows you actually to create elaborate uh, jobs that have multiple branches and for loops for you with, uh, without ever needing to think about them and creating some co complex schemas or architecture decisions. Actually, very powerful feature. For us, was one of the most important, almost instant job start. So when we schedule a job to run, it takes milliseconds to actually execute, start executing the code and to finish it. So for us, 
uh, that satisfies the requirement to have workload orchestration who support live, live jobs or real-time jobs. Last but not least, the compute part is horizontally horizontal scalable, which means well, we can do whatever we need with that part to, to, to make it satisfy uh, our increased or decreased uh, throughput. Now, what does it mean to have separated uh, compute from scheduling capacities? There are two ways how you can schedule a job. Either there is user action coming from UI saying, I want to upload data now. So you create the, 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 the job. Or you set up the job and say, OK, uh, I need this job to run every hour. And uh, Prefect takes care of the rest. All these jobs are merged in, into one queue. And that, that queue is filled into Prefect agents. Agents are basically consum consumers who work, uh, who wait, uh, watch for uh, any job that is about to be uh, started. And once the, uh, the agent knows which, which jobs uh, it can support, so it has uh, access to flow definition. Flow definition is basically a deck that represents the job with its individual task. Uh, I'll show you what deck is in, in a minute. So once the, uh, the agent understands the flow definition, it handles the execution of that flow internally and watches for the result. The, the execution of the flow, however, may take place at a completely different place. And that's the task executor. And task executor might be Kubernetes job, local process, local thread, the other uh, uh, dust cluster. In, in a dust cluster, it might be process or thread. So, the possibilities are endless in this, option, in this way, and you write the flow definition only once, and you can pick the task, task executor uh, whenever you want to. So you can run the same flow definition in local process, or as a, as a Kubernetes job, or as a, uh, as a uh, task in task worker, without change in your code. So that's very po powerful for, for us. Now. I don't know how many of you still remember from university what a DAC is or direct, directed or a, a cyclic graph. Basically, uh, it represents what needs to be done in a job. Each box represents a single task, and the arrows represent the uh, code execution. There's a lot of branching here done, a lot of merging. So, so as you can see, Prefect also supports merging, meaning you may have multiple tasks running in parallel, and Prefect uh, will merge the results and push them into another task. This all is automatically supported by Prefect out of the box. Now, what does it mean to write code for Prefect? I bet if you look at this, at this code snippet, you can understand what's happening. Because you can see typical Python functions that uh, has task as a, as a dec decorator. Some of, the, uh, some of the functions has parameters, like reference data or live data. Prefect can, can detect the, uh, the, these parameters and, uh, and cr create dependency, the dependencies between these tasks. What does, that, what does it mean in reality? Imagine this flow saying, uh, extract reference data, extra uh, live data, and then we have one uh, task called transform, which takes these two, uh, these two as an input. Prefect knows that it can run these two tasks in parallel because they have no other dependencies depending on them. And it, it creates this deck for you uh, and allows you to run the, the code in parallel without you ever needing to think about so which task can, can run in parallel next to each other, which, which task are dependent on each other, the dependencies are soft for you out of the box. If you need to run it, simply run flow.run. Uh, now, we talked a lot about what does it mean to create a job, what does it mean to have a schedule, uh, split between scheduling capacities and compute uh, capacities. The real question is, can it scale it? Well, luckily for us, yes. And there are several ways how you can scale 
uh, the, wor or the workload uh, or the compute part for a uh, prefect. Usually what we do is that we have something we, uh, that's called Dusk cluster. Dusk is Python uh, project, I don't know who, who knows it, it's very interesting. Uh, if you don't know, I recommend you check it out for machine learning guys or for anybody who uses pandas. Dusk is basically distributed pandas in very sh uh, short description. At the same time, it supports running uh, arbitrary functions and it, it contains a scheduler and workers. Scheduler is a single pod that, that, that uh, handles or, or manages the work for individual workers. Each worker can have uh, either uh, processes or thread. So, for example, you, you spin up a single scheduler with three workers, and each worker uh, can support up to 10 threads or 10 processes running uh, inside uh, them. If you want to scale this, simply add one uh, work, worker to the worker pool. That work, worker is, uh, is registered to scheduler automatically, and scheduler starts sending the work their, uh, its way. If you want to descale this, easy. Simply remove one of the other work workers from the scheduler, and scheduler stops sending the uh, data there. This operation is very seamless. Uh, you don't need to perform any, anything very specific. You simply uh, give the worker uh, address to the scheduler, and everything, uh, and they sort it out with scheduler automatically for you. In reality, you may want to uh, have you, you may want to have worker pools. Uh, sorry, heterogeneous wo worker pool. Why? Well, we live in a world when GPUs are not che uh, cheap, but GPUs are very great for some ML-specific operations. So, you may have a job that contains uh, of multiple tasks, and some of the tasks would benefit from running on GPU-powered instances. So, you can start your workers on GPU-powered nodes and give them a tag. With that tag, uh, and, and then set this task requires, uh, uh, has to work, uh, has to run on a worker with specific tags. That way, you, you, you can route uh, easily this task into appropriate, uh, appropriate uh, nodes in your cluster and utilize your, your, your G, GPU instances to their maximum capacities. Another example is you have uh, work, workers running on memory optimized uh, instances which have a lot more memory in case you, you need that for, for, your, uh, for your tasks. So there are a lot of mix and match uh, kind of things that you can do with this setup. The, the common denominator is assign tags to, to your workers and to your tasks to, to give them the priorities or the guidance to know where, where to route the, these tasks. Well. As I mentioned earlier, you have freedom to, to choose uh, how the worker sh sh should, uh, should distribute or run the, the job inside uh, them. Either they use threads or they use processes. Uh, you use threads if you have a lot of I.O. bound operation. You use processes if you have a lot of CPU bound operation, obviously. But you have the freedom to, to choose it how you, want, how you want to deploy them. In case nothing uh, seems appealing to you and you want to have more freedom, well, you, you, you can do Kubernetes jobs. Simply def define the man manifest for, uh, in the agent and the agent will run the Kubernetes uh, job for you and monitor uh, the results. Inside the Kubernetes job, you can again run it however you want to, as a local process or a, as a local dask process, uh, just up to you. 
as you, as you can see, there's a lot of ways how you can scale uh, your, your, your compute and how you can split and mix and match the different nodes or types of nodes in the cloud world. However, whenever we are talking about scaling or a lot of work, it always boils down to, okay, but I do have priority jobs that need to be handled right away. How can you achieve that? Here in, in Prefect, there is one simple solution. Agents support something called labels. So you, you, you can say that the, this particular agent only works or only runs jobs that has particular label on them. Thus, you can label the priority jobs uh, with label priority and dedicate a separate cluster or separate compute for, for the priority queue. That means that whatever you have running in your slow queue does not affect the priority queue you have somewhere else de uh, deployed individually. And you can scale both of these uh, computes independently from each other. So for example, if, if you think that your slow jobs are really slow and you need, need to uh, kick it out a notch, scale up th th that compute. If you think that the priority jobs are lagging behind, you scale the priority uh, compute. That gives you a lot of freedom uh, to, to, to choose from. Well, I spent a lot of time talking about what you could do, what you should do, how it would look like, but now I think it's time for everybody to take a look behind the curtains, how we do it in data stories. This is a small uh, screenshot from our Argos uh, CI uh, UI. You can see that we, we, in data stories, we have three separate uh, dask clusters. Each, each cluster or, or each cluster con uh, is followed by for a respective agent and scheduler. As you can see, we have a lot more uh, demand or a lot, lot, lot more uh, work for data set uploader. So that, that's why we have multiple uh, data, uh, data set uploader workers. But for in, uh, insights and internal workloads, we don't have th that, that much work yet. So we scaled the, uh, those parts down. So as you can see, running multiple dask uh, cluster is easy thing to do. Now, we talk about DAG a lot. This is how Prefect actually understands your code and it can dr draw you similar uh, DAGs that, that, are, that represent your, your job. At the top, you can see the input parameters and the line actually represent dependency between individual jobs and how they, they, they branch out and match together you know, between in individual steps. You can even uh, see on the same level which, which task can run in parallel. Why is this useful? For example, for debugging purposes. This is how it looks like when something breaks in your, in your flow. Inside uh, the Prefect UI, you, you, you can clearly see which task actually broke. You can click on that task and you can, you can examine its, its log. There is no need to, to go into your Kibana, look for, for like tracing ID or, or something else. You can, you can uh, purely use Prefect UI to, uh, to, to pinpoint the issue, which, which is really convenient. Now, how do UI looks like? Very cool. This is actually uh, our, our staging dashboard. You can clearly see uh, how many jo jobs we perform uh, every day. It's like 9,000 jobs every day. And we are talking uh, about jobs that take few seconds, from, from, from few seconds to several minutes, like 10, 15 minutes. So the scale uh, or uh, the range of, of the run of individual jobs quite varies from time to time. And you can see which uh, flows are failing consistently so you can examine those in detail if you need to. So the numbers. As you could see, we have more or less 9,000 uh, jobs running each day on a staging. At the same time, we use three, three dust clusters which we scale individually. Typical job takes seconds, usually not minutes from the moment you want to start the job, to it started, to it finished, and somebody can see the result of the job. This whole life cycle takes around a few seconds, usually. 
the uh, great part is we can handle a peak period. Imagine you, uh, somebody schedules data upload uh, to happen at 9 a.m. Not somebody. Majority of your of your customers schedules that. that uh, I know that my data sets are, are the, fr uh, the freshest at 9 a.m. So please intake them. These these peak periods uh, are very troubling for scaling for scalable systems. So we handle them the usual way. We smoothen out the demand. Basically, all the jobs are queued in one huge queue, and they are uh, handled one by one. It takes longer in the time frame, but we ma maintain the operating cost of the system. And just to give give you the idea. Uh, what is the metal uh, this runs on? Uh, at the moment, I believe there are th three uh, two x large uh, instances, so it's not that huge of a deal. I keep th talking about how great uh, Prefect is, how, uh, how helpful it is for us. It does seem like this is a solvable solution. So, is it? Nope. Unfortunately, it's not. So, where is my free lunch? You may ask. Right around the corner. There are some problems that you run, uh, that you run into when you're using Prefect. The monitoring capabilities in solo hosted mode are very limited. Basically, we like to get some StatsD or Prometheus met metrics fr from the, the Prefect infrastructure. There are none at the moment. They are present in their, their cloud hosted mode, which is paid. We would like to self host it in the solution, and this limits us in that, that area. Also, Prefect uh, usually creates a lot of internal d data, like the logs uh, and other bureaucracy around it. it. It may clog your database, so you need, need to uh, clean it up manually because it doesn't, it doesn't clean after itself. Another thing is memory leaks. Python libraries are, are famous for having memory leaks all over the place. If you run uh, the, uh, Dask workers, the, these memory leaks usually accumulate and, and can bring down your, your Dask workers. What we do actually is that we, we set our Dask workers to restart themselves, themselves every hour or two just to clean up their memory. The list goes on, I mean, uh, we would like to limit the number of concurrently running jobs. You actually can't uh, do it out of the box. Next thing, uh, uh, task parameters. Be aware of what you are sending as a task parameter because these are stored in plain text in the Postgres database. So if you send credentials or something similar to that, they will be stored in your database. Uh, updating prefect is also somewhat tricky and not, not tri trivial. Not hard, but not trivial. We could talk about this for a very long time. Another hour would be probably not enough to, to go over everything that, that could be improved in the perfect version one. Some of the issues were, by the way, addressed in the version two. For example, the throttling mechanism. So, is there even a lunch that I could eat afterwards? I mean, yes. All the problems are more or less easy to solve. You have to roll up your sleeves and get to work, and uh, you can do it on yourself. For example, the throttle mechanism, we were able to uh, implement it our own. Monitoring stack, we were able to expose some of the metrics uh, using hooks in Dask, Scheduler, and Worker. So there are ways how, how, you, how you can add whatever you are missing from, the, from, uh, from Prefect. We created our own cleanup jobs, so, so it's kind of meta that, that prefect, uh, uh, prefect runs flow that clean up Prefect in internals, but it works. At the same time, there's a lot of benefits, like seamless map reduce. You, you, you can create a loop or, or split uh, one huge job into a smaller task and then reduce them together. The UI is really clean. Testing uh, of Prefect code is really simple. Those are simple Python functions. You can run, uh, you can create uh, the unit test that you normally run for Python functions, and that's it. I mean, uh, it can't get any easier than that. Another cool thing is you can write jobs that, that, that depend on other jobs and trigger them. 
So you can, you can uh, write one job, then start another one, then start another one. That kind of gives you the, the composition that, that, that helps you keep your code clean because you don't need to repeat some parts of it. Last but not least, the local setup is that easy. I mean, in order to start uh, playing with Prefect, you don't even need Prefect infrastructure. Simply install Prefect library, everything is ready for you. If you run flow.run, everything uh, triggers for you because it runs in a synchronous way in your process. If you want to move your code to distributed world, simply install the infrastructure, point your code to the agent, and st everything starts working for you. So the starting point or, or the, the, the learning curve is not as steep as you would imagine it to be. Now, the freedom in execution is, is actually so beneficial for us. Right now, we are experimenting with running our jobs in, in Kubernetes, uh, as a Kubernetes jobs, instead of running them as part of like, dust clusters. Th this will be beneficial for like, long-running jobs that, that, that uh, could benefit from Kubernetes, making sure everything runs. Then, I know that I mentioned that, that upgrading Prefect infrastructure is kind of pain in the ass. At the same time, there is official Helm chart. It means you can rely on, uh, on them being, uh, being able to, to perform the, uh, or to write the software that way that it's easy to upgrade, and it, it really isn't that, uh, that difficult. <sighs> Typically, when you start wondering whether you should use a project, some of the first things you ask is, Am I the only one using this product? Am I the only one relying on this tool? If so, who's gonna help me if I run into problems? Well, Prefect is not one of those cases. Uh, it's on the contrary, very, very vivid community that uh, runs on both Slack and Discord channels. Uh, me, personally, I'm part of the Slack community and I can see uh, even the creators of, of Prefect to, to, uh, to frequently join discussion and help you with providing solution. The, the community itself is so helpful that they run channel, like show you what, what you got or ask me any question. We run into some problems uh, with uh, how, how to schedule some particular flows and the engineers for Prefect start answering us and giving us help what, what would be the possible solution to, to our problem. So the community there is great. I, I, uh, so don't worry about that thing. So just to conclude the journey, I mean, we set out, the, uh, the, uh, we set out the, what are the problems. We use Prefect, Prefect solve problems. Does it mean that everything is great and we don't have anything to worry about, uh, anything to work on? Nope. There's a lot of things that, that, that we have in store and that, that, that Prefect is gonna help us to achieve. We would like to increase uh, the analytic use across the kind of platform. So, so use the, the Prefect to run more diverse uh, types of machine learning algorithms. We would like to improve the smartness of, of the platform, again, powered by, by, by jobs running in, in Prefect. And we have the query engine. And actually, if some of you are interested in that area, we work with that. If it sounds interesting, we are hiring guys. Our booth is right outside this hall, so feel free to reach out to us. If you are interested in knowing what data stories can do, I encourage you to go to datastories.atacama.com and try out uh, the software on your own. It's free and we don't even take credit cards, uh, so you can uh, try it on your own and it's great. Thank you for your at attention. Come to see uh, uh, our booth. My name is Lukas Polak and thank you for your time, guys. Thank you, Lukas. We have a bunch of questions, so let's start with that. What is the difference between Prefect and Celery? Yeah, so Celery is a, a queuing solution. So you have one task and you queue it in a, in a queue and it gets done. In Prefect, 
you can uh, you have multiple tasks that can depend each, uh, on each other. So, so instead of having one thing that you compute, you have multiple smaller moving parts that some of them can run in parallel, some of them have to run one after each other and then feed into itself. So uh, using Celery, you, you technically could be, uh, should be able to do the same thing, but instead of splitting it into multiple steps and splitting the workload into multiple nodes, you would run it in a single Python process. So, so Prefect helps you to split your code into smaller chunks and run them in parallel in different machines. So that's, that's the biggest difference. There is another one about differences and similarities. What is the difference between Prefect and Kamunda? Or whatever it's pronounced. Uh, I believe Kamunda is some, a somewhat more gen uh, generic to, uh, tool and it runs uh, containers instead of like prefect code. So, so what we actually wanted to, uh, to have at the beginning was prefect code that we can run uh, very easily in distributed world and prefect allows us to do it. Uh, Kamunda is more focused on running uh, containers uh, in distributed world. It doesn't mean that prefect does not allow you to run containers. Actually, one of the tasks that you can run in Prefect is execute or, or start a Docker image and execute code from that, uh, that uh, image as part of your Prefect flow job. So, so it supports the, the use case as well. But for us, the, the bigger um, motivation to use uh, Prefect was the Python part. If each task is executed by a different agent, what volume of data is feasible to be sent among individual tasks? Well, uh, prefect, this, is, this is the difference between Airflow and uh, Prefect. In Airflow, usually, uh, what you do uh, in order to send data between, between tasks is you, you take the data, you store them in Postgres database, and then another uh, task picks them up from there and, uh, and takes them. This is actually a huge bottleneck in case you are, you are sending a huge amount of data because you can clog your database very, very easily. Uh, in Prefect, it works the way that, that instead of sending the, or storing data somewhere, you serialize your, your data, so you, you store them somewhere in memory and the, the serialized data are, are then pushed to another task. So, uh, in general, it's not recommended to send megabytes of data to, uh, as a parameters. If you have like, megabytes of data, it is preferred to use object storage or some other ephemeral storage as a, a broker or messenger in, 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 the, in this uh, manner, instead of relying on prefect sending the data. So if, if you have like, small parameters, numbers, or small, small or some, small number of dictionaries, it's okay to use it as a parameter of prefect task, but if you have like megabytes of data, I wouldn't send, send it as a, as a parameter of a task. Instead, I would use object storage as an intermediary between these two. Another one about tasks. Uh, can prefect automatically rerun tasks? Uh, All tasks. Uh, 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 about the reruns? Yeah. Rerunning yeah. failed tasks, yes. Yeah, so, so you, you can specify the, the behavior for individual tasks. So, so each individual task can have different strategy for, for retrying. So you, you define how many times uh, the task should be retried, whether there should be exponential backoff, linear backoff, or no backoff at all, and you simply spam, spam it uh, every, everywhere. There's option to store intermediary results to some alternative result storage if you do that and one of the tasks fails, you, you can resume from the previous task and rerun the, uh, the, the failed task again. If you don't store the intermediary results, your whole flow is restored, uh, restarted. From, uh, so it doesn't matter whether first task or last task fails, your whole flow is restarted again. There are some pros and cons to this, but, uh, but it comes down to how you set up your, your task, and this setup is, is upheld by agent. Agent is responsible for making sure the tasks are run in the correct order, and data between them are passed correctly. So uh, if a specific task fails, the uh, agent knows it should restart it. 
There's another one that seems to be related. Uh, does Prefect have different error handling modes as Airflow does? How, do, how well does it handle recovery of workflow errors, like, su such as rerun, backfill, or notifications? I believe I, I just probably covered that with my previous answer, so we can move on. Another one, how do loops work in Prefect? Directed acyclic graphs are not supposed to have loops. Yeah, thank you. Uh, loops in this manner mean that uh, imagine you, you have uh, one task that needs to be executed uh, five times in a row. So, so you want to fire five, uh, five notifications for, individual, for different types of no, uh, no, notification hubs, for, for example. So in, instead of putting this, uh, this for loop inside a single task and one task handling. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm going to talk to these five, uh, five uh, notification hubs. You write it in, into your flow definition and it appears as one box because it's not uh, the loop in terms of that I have task that depends on task and depends on original task. It simply means that I iterate over some list or array of things and do things uh, in parallel. So. Those are loops in this manner. Okay. Are there limitations for task arguments? What type of serials, serialization is used? Uh, I believe there are no, no specific limitation for the parameters. Uh, as for the serialization, they recommend you to, to test the, the serialize uh, function of Python. So if your structure can be serialized using the, the uh, get state and set state, you should be good. So, so these are the, this, this limitation. What are the most interesting uh, prefect use cases you have seen? What kinds of organizations use it? And why would people want to migrate to it from another solution? I don't feel entitled to, to talk about like, other companies who use it because I didn't spend that much time researching other companies uh, who use it. I'm sorry for that. Uh, for me personally, the use cases are if you, uh, like machine le learning flows are typ typically very complex. You have a lot of branching, uh, br br uh, branching that, that, that goes into uh, to the question. You have a, lo a, lot, of, uh, a lot of competition that, that, is to, that, that can happen in parallel. So in, uh, instead of you writing that code in one huge uh, function and hoping that everything can fit into memory of a single node, you simply delegate this work to, uh, to a prefect. So, so, so that's where I see the main benefit of uh, when you have some large job that works with huge amount of memory or takes up a lot of CPU time, it's always better to, to send it to the distributed world. That's where I see the, 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 the biggest power. And that, that's what I would recommend uh, to use. Uh, when should we use the uh, prefect? Okay. Where does Prefect typically store pending task metadata, like uh, what database, you kind of touched on that. How durable is it, and does it have exactly one's guarantees? It doesn't have uh, the exactly one's gu uh, guarantee, I believe. So, so they don't guarantee that they don't have database uh, log for that. So, so it may, under some situation, run your, your flow twice, it, it never happened to us, but, but I, I believe that if you have agents running with the same set of labels, that, that may happen. And uh, the guarantees uh, on the database layer, actually, uh, or the durability of the database layer depends on you, how, how you ma manage your, your database solution. And the final question, can Prefect handle hundreds of thousands of tasks per day regarding heavy data generation running in the cloud? Yeah. That was a quick one. This was Lukasz Polak. Thank you, guys. Mikrobit je programovateľný milý počítač, ktorý ti dovolí prepojiť informatiku s kreativitou.
Dá sa programovať veľmi jednoducho a ovládať tak, aby robil presne to, čo chceš. O pár minút sme zvládli rozsvietiť vlastný obrázok na displeji a o chvíľu sme už obrázky diálkovo prepínali druhým mikrobitom. Mikrobit má v sebe aj super vychytávky, ako sú tlačidlá, senzor pohybu, kompas a teplomé. K mikrobitu ale môžeš pripojiť množstvo ďalších vecí. Tu programujeme, aká animácia sa nám má ukázať na LED pásiku. Ja som na ňom naprogramovala dúhu. Teraz programujeme podľa nôd kohútika Jarabého. Najlepšie na mikrobite je, že si viem vytvoriť napríklad blikajúceho robota alebo gitaru, ktorú ovládam tak, že ňou zatraciem alebo futbalovú bránku, kde mi mikrobit počíta, koľko gólov som dala, alebo kúlové svietiace topánky a tisíc ďalších vecí, ktoré ešte len vymyslím. Mikrobit je hračka, ktorú schováš do dlane a vytvoríš z nej čokoľvek. Tak čo s ňou spravíš ty? Každých 60 sekúnd si 28 tisíc ľudí predplatí službu Netflix. Odošle sa 197 miliónov e-mailov, stiahne sa 414 tisíc aplikácií a ukradne niekoľko tisíc hesiel. Na internete sa toho deje veľa. A všetko najdôležitejšie sa dozviete na Živé SK. Živé SK. Technológie ľudskou rečou.